Oh, what a lovely autumn morning. No wind, the sun is out. The land has been lovely prepared. And today I'm going to share with you my top five tips for avoiding the bad habits that a lot of detectorists make. Stephen is the man with the hat and the metal detector. Oh, oh. Walking the land, he's a treasure collector. Oh, oh. Metal detecting and digging lots of holes, looking for anything that's old. New videos every week, so please subscribe. Oh, please subscribe. Let's waste no time at all, get straight onto bad habit number one. And you can see from this grossly exaggerated swing I'm doing that most people tend to swing from the elbow. This means the coil rises at the end of the swing and it puts a huge difference between the coil head and a potential target. Really, this is the way you need to swing. You're using your shoulder, not your elbow. So don't swing from your elbow, swing from your shoulder and your body should twist slightly. Now I like to swing from nine o'clock to three o'clock, covering a wide arch and making sure that the coil is always no more than one inch from the ground. So that's number one. Now anyone who knows me knows I really like spindle walls. Look at the size of that one. It's got a flat bottom. Sloped sides, rounded at the top, with quite a big hole. Probably about eight to nine millimeters in the middle. Do you know the second bad habit I've seen regularly is detectorists not knowing what sort of swing they should be making. You're talking of hot spotting, searching or gridding. Hot spotting is just when you're walking fairly fast, swinging randomly, keeping it low of course, just looking for a hot spot on a new piece of permission. This is when old detectorists will criticise you and say, you're walking too fast, just ignore them. What you need to do is understand why you're walking fast and swinging fast. Are you hot spotting or is it just a bad habit? Gridding means what it says, you're on a hot spot and you're gridding, you're walking in north, south and then east to west and then you're going across diagonals just to thoroughly search that area. Searching is completely different, you've done your hot spot, you've done your gridding, you know you're in a really good area and you're now looking for some more stuff. Now this typically would be when you're maybe onto a hoard. You think there's possibly more there and you're searching. You're standing still, just changing directions rather than walking. That's searching. So understand what you're doing and don't get into the bad habit of walking too fast, swinging too fast. And if you're doing it because you are hot spotting, just ignore those who criticize you. They've got the bad habits, not you. Well, looky here. It goes to show I haven't walked very far onto the field today. And this is one of the permissions I've detected the crap out of. And I've had two good finds in the first 15 minutes, so there's got to be loads of stuff here. I've had Roman, bronze and silver, hammered, even a um, King Canute hammered came out of here. So I'm looking forward to a good day, with a bit of luck. Number three on my bad habits list is a very common one. We all do it, everybody does it. And that is always looking for better settings. Something that's deeper or louder or will only pick out the good stuff like the silver or the gold. Stick with what you know. There's nothing wrong with the presets that have been installed on your machine. They're there for a reason because they work. They were put there by the manufacturers because they are the experts about that machine that you're using. So when people say try this setting, try that setting, or you start saying what's the deeper setting I can use, go back to basics. Stick with what you know, learn it inside out, and then just tweak that setting to the conditions that you're in. Now this has really made my day. I've been struggling with finds and just been getting loads of bits of lead and bullets, but I've just found a silver Roman denarius on this piece of land which I've never found a Roman silver on before, only bronze. 
can't identify that at the moment. I haven't got my glasses on. But it's in cracking condition. I mean, just look at the detail on that. Isn't that great? Well, I've had a really good day today. And that brings me to bad habit number four. And we're all guilty of it sometimes, some more than others. And that's blaming your machine. There is nothing wrong with your machine, whether it be a starter or that £10,000 machine that's on the market now. Seriously, just learn what you've got. Ignore what people tell you about you should upgrade or, oh, you're not finding anything because you've not got the best machine. You should get one of these multi-frequencies or spend two grand on one of these. It's rubbish. Just take your time and learn. Stick with what you've got and stop blaming your machine. Now this is quite unusual because I found loads of Roman steel yard weights and that's initially what I thought it was. And it still could be. It's a lead weight and it's got a piece of usually steel rusting through the middle. This one looks like a copper alloy. So it might not be a Roman steel yard weight, but it's probably either a weight or a gaming piece. I am a little bit confused. I'm hoping you will know because that has really flummoxed me and that's definitely worth an ID. So I'm calling on all your help all together. I hope there's a general consensus and you all agree because it's really baffled me. I'm sure I'll find out anyway before the video. Now tip number five is to stick to one piece of land. If you're lucky enough to have a permission, just dig that permission out. You'll never do it. Pastures are more difficult than land around me like you can see around me now, which gets turned over regularly. But if you've got a piece of permission, dig it out. Go there frequently. Listen to the machine talking to you. You will learn to be able to communicate between you together. You'll understand what it's telling you. But you'll need to do it on one good piece of land because every piece of land is different. If you go on a dig with somebody else, it's completely different. Mineralized, heavy clay. It could be all sorts of the confusing things which will just make life difficult for you. If you can, just stick to one piece of land for a while until you've learned to communicate back and forth with your machine. Now I do believe I've found, well it is a hammered coin, but it might be a Scottish one. I'm not sure there's usually stars on the Scottish one, so this might not be Scottish, it could be just a foreign coin. And I'm fairly sure I can see a head. Now that is confusing. So how about a bonus number six? If you are going to find somebody you're going to be listening to, find someone an individual that you trust and who knows what they're talking about. There's nothing worse than find people who are well-intentioned on giving their advice but they have no experience on your machine or your land. Find somebody you can rely on and use them maybe as a mentor for a while. Otherwise, learn the hard way as I did. Stick with what you've got. Listen to those six tips, and good luck, and good hunting, and I'll catch you later. Hope you find something brilliant. Flipping egg, I thought I'd got lucky there. I thought I'd found a giant lead purse, because I know it's possible to find small lead purses, so why not big ones? Oh my god, what could have been? Gold coins! Oh well. It's nice about it last Stephen digs it up and then pimps it up so you can wear it.